Happy Sabbath, everybody, and good morning. Uh, thank you, Ian, for the privilege of inviting us, my family, and myself to come and worship with you. Um, thank you so much. It's the first time I've been here. I've been here a few times, sat at the back and watched. And thank you for the privilege. Now, a bit of a background before I actually... No, oh, let me ask the question. Anybody here? What's, what does that mean? Those little strands over there. DNA. DNA. Fantastic. Deoxyribose nucleic acid. Now I want to give you a little bit of a background on why is a treasure of the conference going to talk about this amazing masterpiece, this fearfully and wonderfully made masterpiece, God's masterpiece. A bit of a background. I, when I was a little kid, maybe four or five years of age, I was always fascinated by nature. And whenever I looked out into nature, I saw, I, I was very curious of how things work, why things work. And I remember when my younger brother used to take, cut plants and look what's inside, wondering where this water from the roots, how do they go up the uh, stem of the plants. And I still remember something. I must have been five years old or something. I remember watching these frogs, you know, we had a drain running by our home when, by the way, I'm originally from Sri Lanka. Drain, drain running by our home and I used to watch these frogs leap and get into it. And you know, at that time, we didn't worry about dirty water. You know, we were with young kids. So I still remember so clearly in my mind taking this frog one day, cutting it to pieces and checking to see. Now that's not a nice thing to do, but I was a little kid to see and I was watching this heartbeat. And it was still alive. This is some of them. Then my curiosity just kept growing. Then I went into university, studied the sciences when I was a young kid. Went into university, by the way, in India. I went to university in India. St studied this amazing, beautiful science that just fascinated me. And I did a Bachelor of Science. Then further fascinated me in trying to understand this amazing God's masterpiece. I did a master's in public health, went into preventive medicine. My, my passion was to get into medical school. And so I applied when I went, to, I lectured for three years in Papua New Guinea at our university, and then tried to migrate to Australia. Didn't recognize the degrees at that time because it was foreign degrees. So I went in as a student. I got accepted to Newcastle University to the medical school, but it was so expensive. It was like $24,000 just a semester, and that was 1991. Avondale College, it was only about $13,000 for the year. So what do you do? So I chose to go to Avondale, and you know, because they recognize, they're not recognizing my science degrees, I had to start doing it from the beginning. I thought, no, this is not good. I couldn't, didn't have the money to go to Newcastle Uni because it was so expensive, deferred it to another year. And I thought, man, this is not good. I've got to study. I've got six years of studies. I'm still doing science again. So then I looked. I wanted to become an Australian. And that's before I got married to my wife now. And guess what I did? On top of the migration categories, there was accountancy. Top of that. So what did I do? Accounting. So I graduated in 1993, but my passion has always been God's masterpiece. So that's why today, we're going, I'm going to take you on this journey, and we're going to look at, the, and my fascination is just, uh, the curiosity is just absolutely mind-boggling. Because then we need to go to the beginning of time to understand this too. The journey I'm going to take you through is because we are put on this earth, to take care of this beautiful little earth, even though marred by sin throughout the ages. It's just an amazing place. It's still an amazing place. It's beautiful. I just want you to look out and have a look at it. And you can look at God's masterpiece, you and I, God's masterpiece. So let's go back to the creation story. That's where it all began. We were put on this earth as stewards to look after this amazing, beautiful earth, to work in partnership with him so that we can Tell his amazing message of hope. We want to take as many as we can with us to that beautiful place. That's going to come back right down here. Glorious, beautiful place. In the beginning, time for the first time came into place. God created matter. 
the heavens and the earth. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. Each time I read the creation story, I'm just amazed at it. Please go back home today. Read the Genesis story of creation, and you'll be just fascinated and just in awe, you look at his, our God and say, thank you so much for this amazing earth that you put us in. So that is just mind-boggling. This, this, the immensity, the hugeness of the universe is incomprehensible. We're talking about light years. It's so huge. We wonder why this little speck is amidst this huge, huge universe that has billions of galaxies, billions and trillions and you name it, of stars. There is no, we don't know even today in the astronomical world whether there is an end or whether there is a center. So the intergalactic travel, you cannot even, you can, cannot fathom the speed at everything that's moving. So our amazing God. So I want us to be awestruck and I want us to just Say, thank you, God. We are so small, but we think we know all. So in humility, let's go back and study this amazing story. And guess what? What is a light year? Let's just look at what a light year is. Light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. You multiply that by 60 seconds, you multiply that by 60 minutes, multiply that by 24 hours, multiply that by 365 days, you get a light year. We are talking about light years here. The closest star to our sun is 4.2 light years away. You, those, those zeros, we cannot comprehend those zeros. Yeah? Isn't it? That's amazing. That's our Milky Way galaxy. And guess what? We are somewhere here, the little speck. This is one galaxy in billions of galaxies in this universe. One galaxy. And we are there in that Milky Way galaxy, rotating and running around. Hey, guess what? That end, to those two ends of, the, of our Milky Way galaxy, that's about 100 million light years. The closest, sorry, the the next galaxy, the closest to us, is the Andromeda. How many, it's two, what's it, two million light years away? I mean, it's just mind-boggling, isn't it? So we should be awestruck by an amazing God that we serve. And in bended knees, in humility, turn to him and say, thank you, God. That's just fantastic. And then we come to our little solar system. Right here. And the third rock from the sun. And the amazing sun that gives life to each and every one of us. The energy from the sun indirectly or indirectly has a powerful influence on our mere existence. And the, the, the physiology, or not physiology, actual physical processes that are taking place in the sun, nuclear fusion, you know, gravity crushes, uh, nuclear fusion expands and this continuity of giving that energy that is released from the sun in electromagnetic rays coming and bombarding your skin so that vitamin D can be synthesized through the cholesterol you know by getting in touch with cholesterol now that's another big topic that we could talk about what an amazing God that we serve that is just the solar system right in that Milky Way galaxy now guess what as you're listening to me what's happening this is the macroscopic God we're talking about as you're listening to me, we are rotating on our own axis at about 1,600 kilometers an hour. Like that, we're rotating. And we're then falling around the sun like that because gravity, those amazing forces that God put into place, those natural forces, gravity, electromagnetism, the mathematical forces, physics, biochemical processes that, are, that he put into place, just, just absolutely fantastic, just to make sure that this, this beautiful earth is protected. So we move around the sun at a tremendous speed of about 107,000 kilometers per hour. We don't feel a thing. Gravity keeps us in place. Everything here is in orbit around this big, huge sun. You know, it takes about eight minutes for the sun's light to travel to our little earth. Light. 
It's mind-boggling, and I, I believe very strongly today there is something that's, of course, it's pretty obvious, common sense. There's something that travels faster than light. In our own limited understanding, even in the astronomical, um, uh, what we call scientific world, we know today in the proton accelerator that is used in CERN in Switzerland, they have found out that there are particles that travel faster than light. But God travels, I mean, light is just a small little thing. Just imagine, it take eight minutes to go to the sun. How long will it take us to go to the Andromeda? But God, our Jesus, flat. We can't understand that. And then you know when you get to heaven, I'm going to ask him all these questions. I want to really sit down and talk to him. So, oh, sorry, I've got to press it that way. So when the psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's, I just really want us to really uh, concentrate on this beautiful passage. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. We all are amazing God. We have a huge responsibility as his stewards. That's stewardship there. Stewardship is not about money. It's a person completely, totally committing oneself and to working in partnership with him. The holistic person. That's what's, that's what's, that's all about. I love that because everything belongs to him. He, God owns everything. And then we go from the macroscopic world to this amazing microscopic world. If you look at the whole universe, it's really microscopic, isn't it? This little earth, right? And then we go further down when the psalmist said, I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. This amazing God's masterpiece, you and I. Are his masterpiece, the crowning act of the creation process, the seven day creation. I love that thing. You know, all the scientific world are trying to prove that it was not a seven day creation story. It is pretty obvious to us that God created this amazing, amazing universe in seven days. And the crowning act was his creation, you and I. So we owe an amazing, what do you call, we, sorry, the word responsibility to work in partnership with him. We all, our all needs to be fully given to him. You know, I was listening to the Sabbath school lesson, I saw there was quite a bit of, you know, it's the awesomeness of our God. You've got to have that relationship. That's the key to understanding and keeping that relationship alive. So let's go back to the creation story. We go back to the beginning of time and he gave us some amazing, amazing gifts at creation. And how could we put those gifts into our lives to make sure that we can again be that amazing steward to work in partnership with him? He has given an amazing prescription at the beginning of time. So, you know, nothing you can do will get you to heaven. Grace has saved you already by your faith and your belief. But this is little acronym called creation, going back to those gifts, just to see whether we could, you and I, could put some of these gifts that he gave us at the beginning of time so that we can live life to the full. That's what it's all about. How can we live life to the full? He's given us a prescription. How can we put that into our lives? Again, I keep, I'll repeat this, nothing you can do can get you to heaven. You've already saved by grace, but can we while we are on this earth, live life to the full. And the first thing that he gave us was a choice. You go to the beginning. What did he do? The, one of the most the beautiful spiritual gifts given to us by our great creator God was the choice. We came to church because we have a choice to come to church today. I know some of you are very sick and some are not able to come. But we make choices every day. And even the choice not to do anything is a choice that you make not to do anything. That amazing gift of choosing wisely, wisdom, will make a huge difference. Anything we say, do, and act. I have a strong belief, you know, I, uh, once, I, once you start to grow, because your relationship is a process, isn't it? When you start to have the relationship with you guys, it's a process. You keep talking to him on a minute-by-minute -minute basis because you can make the wrong choice so quickly because in our humanness, we can walk away. So the choice is such a powerful thing. So choose wisely in everything we say and do and act. The next beautiful gift God gave to us was rest. 
You know, that whole cycle is amazing. We just cannot continue to work. This human organism is built in such a way that it cannot continue to just work, 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 work. That's why he, he gave us the night. Why do we need to have that cycle, the circadian rhythm, to sleep in the night so that we can be rejuvenated, rejuvenated revitalized, refreshed, and rebuilt? Rebuilt. He gave us an amazing gift of rest. Do we use that wisely? Again, it's a choice. In our current society, we just, you know, we want to go, 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 go. And then we slowly, in the molecular world of the nano world, again, actually, I need to mention this very quickly, because as you listen to me, everything is happening at cellular molecular level. Even just the breathing of the oxygen from the atmosphere, it goes through a mechanical process, and what happens? It is happening at cellular level. The whole respiratory process, oxidation, taking place at cellular level. So, if there's inadequate, refreshing, rejuvenating, powerful time where you can have the body rest at molecular level, it cannot function optimally. So this is a very, very important part. Seven to nine hours a day. You can, everybody has a different type of physiology, but in general, six to nine hours. Some need more, some need le less. So you understand your physiology, but a huge part of optimal wellness and health is rest. Seven-day Sabbath. Why did he give it to us? That's a beautiful principle of you got to slow down, have that time with family, have that time with me. What a beautiful gift. Let's grab hold of these beautiful gifts given to us. And it will just change our whole perception and our lifestyle. It will make a big difference. Because today, one of the key uh, risk factors, cardiovascular disease, stroke, diabetes, what else, cancer, lifestyle related. Related to the choices we make. Are we getting enough of rest to this amazing, amazing masterpiece? Environment, how is our environment? Things that are around us. When you go home, is your home cluttered and full of, uh, what do you call, junk around the place? Do you feel beautiful going to a home that smells good, that is clean and that is tidy? The impact on your physiology at molecular level is absolutely unbelievable. Just look at some of these factors because it can make a huge difference in our outlook. Is it cluttered? What about the understanding of the beautiful stuff that surrounds us? The plant life. If not for the plant life, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have life. What is the plant life giving out? In the metabolic process called oxygenic photosynthesis, what does it give out as a byproduct? Oxygen. We breathe that oxygen. You know, another fascinating thing in the environment that really gives me uh, goosebumps. It's the 78% nitrogen that is in the environment. If you take the atmosphere and you just break it down, 78% is nitrogen. 21% is oxygen. How does that continue to be maintained? God is in control. We're putting so much stuff polluting the atmosphere. But the 78%, the 21% are for, then you have the inert gases, and you get a carbon dioxide, and the argon, krypton, neon, blah, 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 those little gases are very small percentage. How does God continue to maintain that amazing atmosphere so that we can continue to breathe at molecular level? Guess what? The 21% you breathe in, 16% or so gets out. Only you use about, in every breath, about 5%. Nitrogen, on the other hand, comes in, goes out. Wow. Nitrogen is not used at all at cellular level. Amazing. But for protein, for carbohydrates, you need to have the nitrogen. Where do we get that? They're nitrifying bacteria. That's what happens. And when the lightning strikes and when it rains, nitrates fall down into the grounds and the plant life takes that. Our God is absolutely fantastic. So when you look at a plant, say, wow, God, this is amazing because that is giving us life. Breathe so that we can breathe and we can have life at molecular level. And the DNA within the actual molecular level is not something else. When I get to heaven, I want to ask my Jesus, tell me, how did you make 
DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. What a powerful, powerful protein as a substance that is in each and every individual cell. 23 pairs of chromosomes in each and every individual cell, billions and billions. You can actually compare the internal microscopic world to the macroscopic world. You've got this still orbiting process. You go down to cellular level, everything is moving around the nucleus, electrons, protons. It's just absolutely similar from the macroscopic to the microscopic. And we are amazed at the design of our amazing God on both ends of the spectrum. The nano world. You know, 25 million nanometers is one inch, the old inch, English. I'm still thinking in inches. You know, I, when I was studying, I still think in inches. It's amazing, eh? But it's 2.54 centimeters or one inch. 25 million nanometers at cellular level, at the molecular world, is one inch or 2.54 centimeters. That is mind-boggling. And that's happening at cellular level. As you listen to me, it is happening. And you've got to be awestruck by an amazing God that we saw. So when we look at the plant life, and we put some plants into your home, wow, it's giving out the oxygen. And you're breathing it beautiful. And it also enlightens and makes it a beautiful, beautiful place. Oh, this is powerful. I love this stuff. Action. Action is the law of every being. We can reduce the incidence of numerous lifestyle-related diseases now, all those beautiful gifts are related. This is another very important one that is so important that you incorporate that into our lifestyle. Keep moving. The older you get, the more we need to move because, again, at cellular level, if you want to get rid of all the toxic waste at cellular level, keep the circulatory system moving at tremendous speeds. Your heart, your heart is such an amazing organ. But let me ask a question. Does the heart ever rest? Never rest, right? As long as your life doesn't rest. How many of you agree to this young lady here? Okay. Anybody said the heart rest? Somebody said the heart does rest. Yes, it does rest between beats. So you put your little finger here and check that. That's the beating of your heart. That's the, you know, the ejection. Heart rests between beats. So the stronger you are, the more active you are, the more you have used this amazing muscle, the heart muscle, it's gonna have greater time to rest. Now my heart rate, because I'm a long distance cyclist, so I ride to work, my wife drops me, I ride back, it's about 13 case, I do it almost every day, and I ride on a Thursday night, I ride with a bunch of uh, people from Botany, we do about 50 k's, and on a Sunday we do about 60 k's. Now that's because I'm passionate about it. And I love doing that. But you know, when you do that, you've got to be passionate about doing some action in life. It just revitalizes, re-energizes, gives you more stamina, gives you more energy. You can do a lot of things by being active. It's such an amazing gift. So I encourage you, if you've not done any action, don't go running. I'm going to run today. You might, you might blame me next time you had a heart attack and bang, that fellow told me to go running. No, no, don't do that. Just Start slowly, walking, do something that you're passionate about, that you keep the whole circulatory system inside moving. The more you move it, the more your molecular level, the more your DNA can function optimally. Because at the end of the day, the DNA controls every single molecular action within your physiology. So if you feed the DNA properly, keep the cleansing process proper by by the circulatory process going in, taking away the debris, getting the oxygen, the nutrients back into the cell, it's going to say, yeah, fantastic. So cleanse the system by being active. You know, five times a week, four, four to five times a week, 30 minutes. You know what I do? Another thing, also do strengthening exercises. Do some push-ups. You know, at, at work, I know my, my staff, some of them are here. I'll get up after about a couple of hours, do about 40, 50 push-ups, you know, and then I'll go drink, I drink a lot of water too, and I come back, do some sit-ups. So you can be active right throughout the day. Those are strengthening stuff. And then you do the cardiovascular stuff, where you're actually moving this amazing heart and your lungs and your whole circulatory system. Just imagine, if it flows freely, it cannot stagnate. A simple, beautiful principle. We don't need to be 
understand science to realize the importance of moving within. It's amazing what it can do for you. We could spend a whole seminar on that. That is the core, just like the nucleus of every individual cell governs every single metabolic process within the human organism. That core, the key, the trust, the belief, the faith in our amazing God is the key to our success. The key to the minute by minute, second by second. It's the relational, it's the relational approach. You've got to leave everything in his hand and let his will be done. You know, it's easy for me to sit and talk here, but it's common sense. If we are not led by him working through us, we cannot succeed. That is very simple. It has to be, now you said, oh, we've got to pray every hour. I believe in praying every second. Everything we do, say and act, if we connect and keep that alive, that, that connection is a powerful thing. It will direct and lead us in what we say, do and act. In humility, we need, I believe strongly in humility, we need to go to him every second. Everything that we do, and be directed by him. It'll make a huge difference in our lives, our relationships, with our workers, with our families, with us, with our kids. That is the core, just like the nucleus. If it's fed optimally, it can, it'll function optimally. If our life is connected, that, that powerful connection is so, the speed of that connection must be mind boggling. What is light? Nothing. The speed of the connection between God and you is faster than light, faster than anything that we can ever f fathom or even think about. So let's keep that alive. They, that is the key and that's the core to our mere existence. Our relationship with God, our trust, our belief. And I love to just go into this because stewardship equals discipleship, equals understanding that our whole being, like I think you talked about time, these are some of the beautiful principles that we can incorporate into that trust relationship. Our time, our talents, our temple, we just, we're just talking about the treasure we just talked about a few minutes ago. The, he said, return unto me my 10% so I can use it for my priesthood. Now the offering which I forgot to talk about is also has a multifactorial approach. You, the offerings that you collect, the 27 here, you keep it here to maintain and keep this um, um, church going for outreach for the various projects you do locally and the other offerings from the 52 has a global influence today's media evangelism where does it go to it goes to the South Pacific Division for the Adventist Media Center and Hope Channel so your amazing gifts in giving tithe is return offering is a given there's a two distinct difference God said to get to his, so, to his people, faithful people, return unto me my 10% so I can use it to my ministry. The offering is something that you freely give to, for the various ministries that are happening today. So 52 weeks, 27 you keep locally, the rest you give into media evangelism, to Adventist World Radio, Pacific Adventist University. You have an amazing influence in giving. So, God bless you for that. So, the tr then we looked at all these beautiful other principles too. So, that's what it is. Keep that stewardship. We are his God's stewards, working in partnership with him. How is our relationship? Not a beautiful gift gave to, God gave to us at the beginning of time. Our relationships. How is our church? How is our relationship? It starts with the nucleus again. Nuclear family. Your sp our spouses, our kids, and it will reach out. If that relationship is good, it will just reach out and blossom outside your workforce, your work, and your extended families. How is our relationship in a church? When people walk into this church from outside, do non adventist non-Christian, do they see an amazing relationship? I'm sure they do. Uh, can they just be so comfortable when they walk in? How is our relationship as a church? Are we, are we constantly, you know, when I joined the Adventist, I was a Catholic, by the way, and I joined the Adventist church, that was quite a few years ago. I was the first in my family. That was amazing. Another beautiful story, which one day I'll share. Um, it's funny how we sit at our tables and we start criticizing each and every person in our church. What's wrong with us? We have no right to do that. And I saw that happen over and over again. Now, this is so wrong. 
we are here to work together our relationship should be so strong as a church so that we can then reach out and make a huge difference then we can draw people unto us are we quite legalistic do's and don'ts no that should not be part and parcel of our life our relationship will determine how people will look at us by beholding we become changed so we have to work together the, all of us with your pastor with your elders with your deacons work in partnership so that people can see that amazing beautiful relationships in our church so we can then reach out wow and make people feel so comfortable please you know i went to i've traveled a lot within the north news and conferences some of our churches i'm going to be very open with you are so protective they're waiting and ready to be translated no external influence look at our jesus where who did he mingle with with the riffraff oh how dare we start to be so condemning of other people who are not like us i ride with a number of people all of them are non-admins all different walks of life they ask me questions beautiful let people don't ever be judgmental of other people and i i'll say this from the bottom of my heart the bottom is the card no the pyloric end yeah the top is the cardiac end sorry i had to say that <laughs> sorry um again it's physiology how is our relationship with each other can people see that we are an amazing group of people that we work together for his cause so that we can reach out and tell his amazing message of hope to people who don't know anything about it and never be judgment never you know i think philippians no where does it say look at that don't look at that see i'm not a pastor so i'm not very good at some of these uh, biblical passages but it says in what passage is that do not look at the big plank in no the speck in that person's eye but look at the huge plank you got in your eye right is that that's right so let us not be judgmental let us love with all our heart let us not look at other people and say i'm better than you you know the funny thing is oh i'm running out of time sorry my wife just said be careful so by the way i'm also she also tells me things like be careful of your accent because it sounds so terrible at times people cannot understand what you're saying you know one guy said to me one day oh, i loved your sermon but i couldn't understand a thing <laughs> <laughs> so she just said slow down as well as time sorry i get five two more minutes is that all right yeah. it's beautiful isn't it this is amazing this is our god our amazing god we we just got to be all struck by him so i just hope you get just five more minutes won't be hurtful yeah it must be hurting but that's all right it's just food after that right outlook how is our outlook ladies and gentlemen is it positive it is it, do you look at things from yeah no matter what Philippians 4:1 I think says no matter what put your heart and soul into it no matter what circumstances how is our outlook is it very negative at times no we get people who are different but look at things it will make a huge difference in your physiology it will function better if you look at things beautifully no matter what the circumstances look at it how can you look at things from a positive angle what a difference that would make again the impact is physiological as well as your relationship with other people it's just absolutely amazing what it could do if you look at things from a completely different positive approach to life and finally oh i'm pressing the long play i've got to spend at least a couple of minutes here that is the life your source of growth regeneration and delight i love food how many of you love food Yes, yes, I love food. I just love food. But you know what? It's how much you eat, when you eat, what you eat makes a huge impact on your physiology at molecular level. You can either kill yourself or you can have optimal wellness and health. So it's all what we do, how much we put into us. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a little beautiful prescription. What I do and see what you think. Okay? how many of you have a nutri bullet at home oh heaps of you fantastic you know i was quite skeptical about it till my wife said no 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 it actually i used to always have a what do you call a blender so i blend everything and it's all there all the beautiful 
fiber and everything in there. When the Nutribullet came, I said, no, that's another juicer type of thing. So I was quite skeptical because I want to have the fiber in it. I said, no, 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 the fiber is also in there. So I had to read about it. I said, oh, wow, this is good. So from that onwards, about three years, isn't it? Three years. Amazing. You know what I put in there? I put carrots, mm, different types of fruits and uh, what do you call and a lot of seeds, chia seeds, um, LSA, linseed, sunflower, almond, um, quinoa, five, six different types of seeds into it, put it all together, blend it. So I can drink about one and a half liters and have no problem because my system's got used to it. So if your system's not used to so much roughage, don't do it. You'll be running the whole day. So you've got to start slowly, yeah? So I do that, and that's my breakfast. And I food put so good into it, so it's, a, it's amazing. The power in that life is in the seeds, isn't it? The nutrients in the seeds, it's just absolutely fantastic. Then I just do not touch anything else but just simple H2O. Water, water, water. Just water, no juices. Just, uh, just saying what I do. Because then have a good lunch. And water, water, water. Now, if you're on the bigger side, try to reduce the amount, the volume of food that you eat in the evenings. If you can reduce it at low calorie, it would be much better. But you know, on and once in a way, you've got to have the family time, you have it. But reduce the, reduce the night intake because your body slows down. The metabolic process slow down and in excess of energy that you take in will be stored as fat. You don't want that. So... That's a pretty or simple little thing I'm just telling you. Introduce more seeds, nuts, fruits and vegetables. Even if you have a hard time not getting rid of the meat, reduce the volume of it. But the plant-based diet is ideal. No question about it. The scientific world today knows that. We know that. God gave to us in the beginning. But if you can't do it, just introduce more of the seeds, nuts, fruits and vegetables. I tell you, your immune system, your whole physiology smiles and laughs. You know, when I drink that thing, my immune system is saying, yeah, Shane, what a guy, man, thank you so much for that. Because molecular wise, it's smiling and laughing and just being so happy that it's fed the right thing so that it can function optimally. That's absolutely amazing. And I'm just gonna quickly go on to this one. Ian, is that okay? One minute, you know, I'm just going to give you a physiological response of what happens if you're on a seafood diet. You know, you seafood, you eat it. Not seafood, seafood, you eat it, right? Okay, you have a good breakfast. Your pancreas secretes insulin to make sure that the blood sugar level comes down to optimal level because at the end of the day, you need sugar. Where does the sugar, where is it needed? Not in the blood. It is at cellular level because it needs energy for it to function, for you to breathe, for your heart, to, for you to think, for you to do anything. You need energy at cellular level for the oxidation process in the mitochondria of the cell. So you have that meal, your blood sugar level goes up, so the message is sent to the pancreas saying, hey, blood sugar level is too high, get it down, we need it at the cellular level. So it grabs all of, that's another amazing part of our God's amazing gifts. He actually... The insulin grabs the sugar and transports it through the cellular membrane into the cell. That's powerful. That is at molecular level. That's fantastic. So that happens. And the blood sugar level comes to 100 milligrams, 80 to 120 milligrams per cent. That's the normal thing. When you do your blood test, you'll find that out. Then another, uh, an hour later, you walk to your office, you walk to the kitchen. Oh, nice cookie. You take the cookie full of your concentrated sugar, eat it. Guess what happens? Your blood sugar level immediately shoots up because it's con concentrated sugars. It shoots up, a message is sent to the pancreas, hey, blood sugar level is too high, bring it down. So the pancreas secretes the insulin, grabs hold of the sugar, takes it to the cell. Another hour later, you see a fizzy drink. Now don't, don't take me out of context here. I'm just giving you a physiological ex experiment here. You drink this fizzy drink full of sugar, 20 teaspoons of sugar, bang, blood sugar level goes up, a secretion of insulin to bring down the levels. You do that six, seven times a day. I'm just giving a simple example. What happens? You do that day in and day out. One day, your pancreas is going to cry and say, I've had it, Shane. You have abused and misused my physiology. I'm giving up. What happens? Adult onset diabetes mellitus, which is responsible for a number of other diseases. So I'm just giving you a simple little 
beautiful way of how we can look after amazing God's masterpiece. Just go very quickly, those beautiful principles, a choice, we make a choice every day, rest, environment, activity, those are those beautiful gifts that we can use that will make a huge difference in how we can live life to the full. It's not about earning merit points. No. It's about how do we have the energy, do we have the exuberance, do we have the vitality to to work in partnership with him to tell his amazing message of hope. That's what it is, to live life to the fullest. Nothing can get you to heaven. You'll be already saved by grace. This is just to have optimal wellness. So that when we go, we go with the go. We don't need to go like that. We need to have full of life when we're working in partnership. with. I have come that you may have life and life to the fullest. Knowing not that you're amazing body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God you are not your own as again ownership you are bought with a huge price therefore let us in humility glorify in everything we say do and act so that's what it is I took you on this journey to be awed by an amazing God that we serve at the macroscopic and the microscopic level. He's an amazing God. So let's put our hearts and soul into just working in partnership with Him so we can all say, wow, marvelous are thy works. God bless you all.